Lesson 3.8 will use the same pendulums that students used in the previous lesson. However, in today's lesson, students will perform a series of tests in which they change one variable at a time to observe what impact, if any, the change produces. This lesson requires some materials to be prepared ahead of time, so let's cover that now. In addition to the 38 centimeter pendulums that students have from the previous lesson, pendulums of various lengths need to be prepared for today. You will want enough additional pendulums at these various lengths to be able to give one additional pendulum to each pair of students. Another object to prepare ahead of time is a cardboard or poster board hole-punched number line from the numbers 5 to 25 with paper clips from which the pendulums will hang. With these materials prepared, we're ready to begin. The lesson starts by reviewing the pendulum time trials from the previous lesson, as well as the discussion which followed on brainstorming which variables we might change. Review with students that today they will be predicting the impact of changing certain variables and what impact that would have on their pendulum. And then they will gather data by testing each variable multiple times. To help students record their data, an Exploring Pendulums record sheet is provided for this lesson. The first variable students can predict and then test is to increase the mass of the pendulum by adding a second small washer to their original pendulum design. Students may be surprised to observe that this factor does not impact the number of complete cycles their pendulum will make in 15 seconds. Next, students predict and test what will happen when they release their pendulum from different angles of release. If protractors are available, then students could use those to, ob to obtain more precise angle measurements. Otherwise, students can use approximate angle release points. 90 degrees is straight out, about 45 degrees would be about halfway, etc. As students will discover, changing the angle of release will not cause a noticeable impact on the number of complete cycles the pendulum makes in 15 seconds. When students experiment with angles of release, at some point, it's very likely that they may end up dropping the pendulum rather than allowing it to swing, especially if they try to release the pendulum from over 90 degrees. It would be worth discussing with the class that for the angle release test to be considered fair, the pendulum needs to swing from the moment it is released and not drop straight down first and then swing. The third variable is the length of the pendulum. For this test, student groups will receive a pendulum prepared at a different length and predict based on the length of the new pendulum whether they think it will impact the number of complete cycles made in 15 seconds. Unlike the other two variables, Changing the length of the pendulum will have a definite impact on the number of cycles, with the relationship being the shorter the pendulum, the more cycles it will experience, and vice versa. A class T-chart can be created and displayed for the class, listing the different pendulum measurements and their number of cycles, so students who weren't able to test every different length can see the results of the various lengths. This T-chart will also be used in the following lesson, so we should hold on to it after today's lesson. In addition to the T-chart of data, the number line will be used as a way to help students make visual sense of this relationship between the pendulum length and the number of cycles. Introduce the number line to students and hang each group's pendulum according to the number of cycles it produced in 15 seconds a visual pattern will emerge, which students can then sketch in their science journals. The following lesson 
we'll use the data from the T-chart and this number line. So make sure to save or store these items.